What we're trying to do, obviously, this morning is to gather your opinions and attitudes on a subject. Can't say the wrong thing. Yes, ma'am. I disagree because they keep doing the same tests over and over and a half for a hundred years. There's no sense repeating the same test over and over. If I believe all living things have the same rights. And since they are living and breathing, they have a right not to be harmed. Well, the same thing, if they don't have a choice, if you want to test medicines on humans, they have a choice whether to do it or not participate. Amount of suffering that they're being put through with no no ability to tell anyone how much they're hurting. And then over here, 28. I just want to agree um, that anything that can feel pain should not be tortured. I wanted to state that I disagree as well with the animals being tested because of the pain that they go through and the way they're treated. Um, it, it's not necessarily. All of those facts are correct in as much as the pain and suffering and so on and so forth. I think that the biggest issue is that 80% of trials that are done on animals don't actually, it, it doesn't equate to human trials. Like um, another woman said, how many times can, can you do testing on these animals? Go ahead. The, uh, mice are very biologically equated to humans. And so what we learned from mice is really very close to what would happen at the beginning, although obviously it was more expensive. It's like when it, the research should be done, it should be done humanely. But, um, but it's been done throughout history. It isn't just the last hundred years. It goes way back. Everyone keeps saying that they're animal lovers. Well, human beings are animals. There's also no uh, mention here that this testing is only for humans. Animals being tested could also be helping other animals as well. But I do agree, research does need to be done. Um, I'm a cancer survivor myself. I used experimental drugs. If, if there's animals in shelters that are going to be put down because they are unwanted pets, take them and use them. That way they are there for a cause. They're saving somebody else instead of just being killed because no one else can take them in. And why don't you stand right, right about here? Place. Okay. All right. Good morning, everybody. My name is Carolyn, and I've been working in animal research for about 16 years, uh, maybe a little bit more than that. And some of the roles that I've had while working with animals in research is a study technician. So what Jen was doing in that video, giving the injections, handling the animals, taking care of them, those are the things that I did as a, as a study technician. Uh, when Jen was getting poked and they weren't finding the vein, I was cringing. And when I bleed the animals, because that was my next role, for the next six years I was a sample collection technician, which means that I bled animals in order to see how much drug was in their system at the time. So when that was happening, I was cringing because that's just, when I poked the animals one time. I wanted to make sure that I got the best sample possible for those animals. Um, after that, I got into management. So I was managing technicians that worked with small animals and large animals. So I've worked with rats, mice, hamsters, guinea pigs, goats, cows, chickens, turkeys, dogs, and primates. Uh, there was a comment earlier about the animals can't speak for themselves, and that's right. Um, so some of the things we do in the lab is we monitor their body weight. We monitor their food consumption, because that is how they tell us if they're not feeling well. So if they can't eat, they probably don't feel well. So we note that and we make sure that we work with the animal to alleviate any pain or distress during that time. Um, when you're doing studies on animals and, and they get sick and um, they're gonna die, do you let them die naturally or do you then put them down like a piece of cake? We will humanely euthanize the animals. Uh, we don't want them to pain, have pain and suffering either. So we have humane endpoints that we look at and we have several veterinarians on staff with us that help determine those endpoints. Okay. Um, what, you you uh, say that you handle the animals humanely during research. Uh, do, why is that they're not more uh, 
what, what I'm trying to think. You know, it should be put out there more exactly like a story. And the short answer is we're scientists. We, we don't do a good job communicating. The, the thought process for years was let's put our head in the sand and the data will speak for itself. Well, the data is not out there. So now we're trying to do things like that because to get that information out there. I grew up not being an animal lover, so my opinion was whatever. Great. Eight months ago, I got a puppy, and it was like, don't hurt my animal. Five months ago, my daughter was a diagnosed with lupus, so now it's like, I want my daughter to live, but don't hurt the animals. After today, I can tell you 100% that I support research for animals because I, I saw that they weren't getting hurt so bad. I've heard from people getting this information. I knew nothing about it before today. After today, I feel 100% positive about it and I want you to find a cure for lupus and thank you. I'm still in between, but as for the shift change, I got information that I didn't know existed on the research. The it was the story of the cancer uh, patient. Uh, it put a face on um, a scientist. I mean, when we say these horrible scientists, the research, it's very uh, obscure. But when you actually see what she does in the lab, how well she treats the animals, and then her story where this is benefiting her, then it makes me see how important that her wor the work is. Well, it's the first time I've heard from the researcher's side of how animals are treated during uh, animal testing, and I, I just felt um, you're emotionally challenged when you see the terrorists because you hear of all these horrible things, and then no re researchers come out and tell you that's not true. This is they are treated humanely, and that's given me a switch because you know that things have to be tested and for the rest of us too. Uh, primarily, Jen's story struck me as like I've never realized medical research on animals versus my ignorance of what was really been going on with it. I've just, like I said on the thing, I was hearing so much about animal abuse and the fact that she worked with the animals and to go through exactly what they are and I think that the, the scientist needs so, more support. Uh, the medical researcher who discussed with us and gave us the information and education about how the animals are really treated when it comes to um, helping so far as medical research. Yeah, my first reaction was, no, of course they don't want to hurt animals. You know, I mean, who would be a person that would want to hurt an animal? You know, nobody does that, you know, but then you thought more about it. And honestly, it's a subject I really hadn't thought too much about. And, you know, you just think, oh, you get the medicine. And I honestly didn't think where it comes from or how it gets tested or anything. I just need it, you know. But um, after seeing the information in the story, I really started to think more on a personal level, like, oh, this is where, you know, this is how far back it goes. This is what comes into place to make you be able to take this medication. I'm putting the human touch to it and the human side to it. It changed it from what was previously thought like an antiseptic, cruel environment to something that where you saw it, it created a need that there needs to be for medical research. It reminded me of the need. And it also put the compassion of the actual researchers on the front page where I had never thought about that before. You know, you're just projected with images of testing, but you actually saw the compassion that they had and that made the switch for me. I really didn't know anything except what the extremists will tell you about the cruelty that the animals go through. And um, that was the big kicker for me is learning that they're really well cared for. Your heart hurts when you hear it's about animals. Like I said in the beginning, that there is no voice for them because they can't, you know, talk. But when I saw that the animals were in harnesses and when I heard your guest speaker, when it's a humane um, thing to do, then, then it's okay. But if you do it in a humane way, and, and we have to because we're not going to test on ourselves, there has to be something. So, I mean, I totally was against any animal testing. And I, I have four cats at home, and I love them dearly. But if, if they could help me with my diabetes, I'd, I'd be all for it. And if it's in a humane way, I think it's a marvelous thing.